welcome back to the Autumn Acorn Knits. My name is Judy and this is where I come to you about once a month to talk about what I've been knitting, crocheting, and yarn dyeing. This is episode 74, so welcome. We are going to start with my finished objects and I have seven today. If you have watched any of my previous vlogs, I've done a couple of silent vlogs uh, in, I think it was January, February and March, pretty sure. Um, you can get some other details about what I've been up to, but this is going to strictly be a podcast to talk about what I have finished making and what I am currently working on. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's start by talking about what I am wearing. This is my third ranunculus by Midori Hirose, and I love this pattern. I've talked about it before. I won't go into all the reasons that I love it. I will tell you that this uh, version, this summer version, spring-summer version, uh, was knit with one of my absolute favorite yarns and that is silky wool. I have just a little bit left of a third skein, so it only took me three skeins to make this, and the silky wool skeins are 50 gram skeins, uh, DK weight, and this is the color Manhattan Mist, which I was able to pick up through a uh, a Ravelry de-stash. It's a great way to get those odds and ends yarns that you need, maybe an extra skein here and there. So this, uh, I knit the size two. I did short rows in the back and front, and I followed the directions pretty much, although I made my body a bit longer, um, and I made I did a little eyelet around the sleeves, but other than that, it's pretty true to pattern, and it fits great, it feels great. If you suffer from hot flashes like I do, this is the perfect wool for you. It's a, um, let me tell you what the content is. It's 45% wool and 35% silk with 20% nylon, just to give it a little bit of ruggedness and a little stretch, which is a dream to work with. Um, so yeah, this is my third ranunculus. Very happy with it. We'll see if I can keep it on. I usually do okay with with this wool. I like wearing it in the, um, when I'm warm, so we'll see how I do. Okay, the next finished object are a pair of socks. Again, if you have seen my vlogs, you have seen a lot of these finished items. So here they are. They are vanilla socks, knit top down. Um, I use Tia's Terrific Threads for this pair. Here is Tia's logo. And this is a uh, called Strong Sock Base. There is there. There are 400 yards per 100 grams fingering weight. It's an 80% superwash blue face luster and 20% nylon. And the colorway is mountain, which I live in the mountains, so this is perfect for me. Although a little bright, but I got these through a um, I believe this was through yarn swap. So anyway, they're warm and lovely. Hello, Miss Merrill. Merrill may be joining us as per usual. Hello, darling. So, yeah, that was a quick pair of socks. I absolutely love to knit stripy socks. I've been on a roll with socks. I want to say I'm on my sixth or seventh pair already for the year, and my goal is to do the box of socks, so 12 pair by the end of the year, which I don't think I'll have any problem with because I'm really enjoying it. That brings me to my next finished object, which is another pair of socks. This time we have some Chopel Zoberball um, Patagonia. And let's see, I used, I always use US1 for my fingering weight socks, so unless I say otherwise, it's a US1 
to five millimeter. I use double pointed needles almost always. And I'm not sure if this um, colorway had a color. So I didn't write one down, but I made these really, really tall and or really long, I guess you would say, and they're going to be perfect for winter socks. But I will not be wearing any of these socks yet. I'm going to put them all the way until probably December uh, when I, you know, enter the, the knit along and then, um, you know, I'll, I'll get them out for like Christmas. I'll open them all out up and, and um, enjoy them all at once, so that will be fun. I did have quite a bit of the yarn left, so this will end up going into a scrappy blanket probably. I'm not sure how much is here, but I doubt it's enough for a pair of shorty socks. Maybe a pair of child socks though. It's a really great wool. It seems like it's gonna wear quite well, but we'll see. Um, then I have another pair of socks. I call these my Knotty Pine Fiber Socks. And all of these socks are vanilla socks, so I don't have any special patterns in them at all. But, um, so here are my Knotty Pine Fiber Socks. And I'll show you, <laughs> I'm going to show you this, this sock in the front. Because this is the sock that I really like. And its pair, I don't really like. I'm not sure what happened but they, they don't match. They don't match in color. I also did the wrong cuff, so it should have been a two by two. I don't know what made me do a one by one. And the toe, you know, the, the foot of the sock is too long. So all around, they're, they're not the greatest, but I'm going with it because I like this one a lot. Anyway, I used Knotty Pine Fiber Co. yarn. Uh, this is called Big Big Horn Sock, fingering weight, 80-20. It's an 80 superwash merino. And the color is A Cabin Christmas. There's her label. And I, in, when I first um, opened up the hank, I rolled it up into two equal balls. But you could see that I used uh, more on the one that's a little bit longer, obviously. Uh, but so these will also go into a scrappy blanket, which I love to do. Nothing will get wasted. Hello, Meryl. Are you looking out the window at all the snow? We got a lot of snow last night. And it is almost April, so yeah. Okay, my next finished object. Um, I do not know the name of this pattern. Um, I made this hat a long time ago for my youngest granddaughter and it just came out way too small so I saved it. But it's a cute little bonnet and I recently um, found this ribbon at a thrift store and sewed it on. So I don't have a lot of details about this cute little bonnet except that it would fit a newborn and I used Cascade 220 to knit it in in this cream color. What was that? The wind is really strong today. So I'm going to just put this away and put it in the gift basket. So there's that. My next finished object I have been working on, let's see, last spring I think I started it and I just finished it. I just don't know why I put things off sometimes. But it is my pajama cardigan 2.0. Um, this was, I think, the latest pattern that I released. Could be wrong. But, um, here she is in all her glory. She is a top-down cardigan with this beautiful texture on the back and on the sleeves. Um, top-down, you work the button band at the same time as the sweater, so you don't have to go back and pick up any stitches. Um, when I was finished I also knit a slip stitch. I hope you can see that there along the collar to make it a little bit stronger. And I did the same thing all along the inside of the button bands. 
because I don't feel like a top-down cardigan or even a sweater is as sturdy as a bottom-up seamed. I've said that a million times and I stand by it. But I really, really like this. I made this in the size small, and it, it is indeed small. I'm, I'm a medium, but, um, you know, whatever. I needed a size small sample done, so this is what I did. Uh, there are no buttons on this, just like I said, the button band, and I love it. It feels wonderful. So the yarn that I used is... That Plymouth Sea Isle Cotton. This is what I have left out of, um, I think, four? Four hanks? But the Sea Isle Cotton by Plymouth is amazing. It's a wool cotton blend, but it has some nice stretch to it, so it doesn't hurt your hands at all. Um, I used a US 6 4.0 millimeter to knit this up. And... It's available in my Ravelry shop if you're looking for a cozy, comfy sweater that you can wear over your pajamas. Oh, I didn't put pockets on this version, mainly because of running out of yarn. I really wish I had enough. And I may go on to Ravelry's D-Stash and just see if maybe there's the skin there. And then I could add some nice, it's supposed to have nice big pockets with the same texture pattern on both sides of the cardigan. So I might still do that. I'm not sure yet. Okay, let's see. I have one more finished object and then we'll get on to some works in progress. Okay, so my next finished object is a shawl. And this is a shawl that I'm offering to my patrons um, because they get a monthly yarn and I wanted them to have a pattern that worked well with that yarn. Um, this is the yarn that I give um, each month. This was the February's dye, which was called Cape Jasmine. This really pretty blue resulted from that flower. I think it's an Asian flower. I ordered the extract and I was looking for something else that could dye up a pretty blue besides indico because indico is a little, it's a little tricky and it smells. I don't like the smell and it comes off on your hands. So there's some negatives to indigo that you don't get with Cape Jasmine. So anyway, um, they are 50 gram skeins that I send. So I just, this made up this little shawl pattern that I felt would make good use of those 50 gram skeins. And all of the skeins that you're seeing here have been uh, naturally dyed. These are some of the skeins that were sent, some of the colors rather, that were sent to the patrons. I hope you could see that, well, most of that at least. But it's a uh, simple um, kite shaped shawl with a um, uh, with mohair held double that's what I wanted to say but um, it is a smaller a smaller type of a shawl um, I think just the right size for just throwing on and running up so yeah you hold um, the mohair double I used a an undyed mohair so you can see the marling effect but it would work with many different uh, colors, I'm sure. Uh, what else can I say about this? Um, I used a US 6 4 millimeter needle, and I feel like it was around 250 grams, I believe, by the time I was finished. There is a lovely um, I-cord um, edge on the entire shawl, and yeah, it was knit side to side. I'm really enjoying the side to side construction. I think this is the third shawl so far that I've made that way this year, so I really enjoy it. So yeah, 
anyway, just thought I would show you this, and this is something, a pattern that you can get on my Patreon. Okay, the... Uh, while we're talking about shawls real quickly, I will, I've shown you these two shawls before, but the reason I'm showing you th them again is they have finished being test knit and edited, and they are ready for pattern release day, and that will be on April 1st. I'm going to be having a really big 60% off sale on all my patterns, um, beginning throughout the entire month of April to celebrate my upcoming 60th birthday, which will be on April 3rd. So I thought it'd be a, a fun way to celebrate that milestone. So anyway, the the new release of the pattern for the shawl will also be in that 60% off sale. I thought that would be extra fun, but it will be the, um, the Baker, sorry, Baker River shawl. Um, here it is. I always struggle with finding the right side but you know it's it's because it doesn't matter with this one so much but I have shown you this before it's a cute little garter stitch shawl knit side to side and the ruffle is added at the end um, I love ruffles um, I'm definitely a, a ruffle girl so I welcome the ruffle uh, yeah I had one of my testers, she added a little button to hers so that it would stay closed when she wears it a certain way. It's so cute, so cute. And she uh, dyed her own yarn, so that was really special. All the testers did a wonderful job. I appreciate it so much. If you tested for me, thank you again. And then there's also the DK weight. So this was the fingering weight version, and this is the, um, the DK weight version. And I held mine with a skein of mohair. This was some beautiful yarn by Ritual Dyes. Um, do I have the name of that one? Mm, ruffle Shawl. Doo, 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 doo. Yes. Ritual Dyes Maiden. The color is Agate. And then, oh, and then the, um, yeah, the little ruffle was done with knit picks palette and the color pumice heather and then this one was knit up with fleece artist uh, merino it's a single ply i don't think i have the color mm. fleece artist merino slim i used a us4 three millimeter needle oh and the knit picks palette ruffle was in the color, <clears throat> excuse me, turmeric. Turmeric. I had very little yarn left over, um, but I used one skein of the Merino Slim, and there's what's left. And then this is what's left of the um, ruffle yarn. So it almost takes a full 20 gram mini plus a skein of fingering. So look for that pattern in April. I even put on a, um, a little acorn so I would remember which side was the, the front. <laughs> so pretty. I love this. I really love this. It's so, so soft. Super soft. Okay. So that is it for my finished objects. Let's move on to whips. So the first whip is a little hard to show you, but it is my gravel pullover. Um, I've talked about this one before. It is by Raylan Finch of No Law Knits. Uh, I'm using Knit Picks palette in the color Comfrey, which is this dusty lavender color right here. So pretty and so soft. This is a fingering weight. Um, what else can I tell you? I'm using a US 5 3.75 millimeter for the body and the neck, the funnel neck also has mohair silk and that is by Rowan, shade 589, in case you're curious. So I'll try to show it to you. I've got a lot going on with the body and the sleeves right now, so I have two skeins of yarn, but I've come quite a ways since the last time I since the last time I showed you. 
So you have this, this cute funnel neck lined with the mohair, and then this is your little, you know, you can tighten that or loosen it. There's supposed to be one of those at the bottom as well, but I'm not sure I'm going to do that. I may just end up knitting um, until I feel good about the length and then binding off. And I started to work on a sleeve because I was getting bored with the body, but it is just round and round and round at this point. There's no, um, no thinking involved, so I like this one for TV knitting. And obviously this will be, I mean, it's very light, but because of the funnel, I don't think this would be appropriate for anything other than winter. So I'll probably be putting that one aside for a while. Where can I put you? Or can I put you out of the way? How about here? Okay. All right. Let's see. Scrappy double crochet blanket is next. This is being crocheted uh, with all of my kind of pinks and purples and just really pretty pastel-y colors. Um, all my extra little tidbits of sock yarn, etc. You know, anytime I have a, a little nugget, I throw it in here. Um, let me try to hold up the top. Hold on a minute. Yeah, let's see, it's a struggle. <laughs> here we go. This is what I have so far. <laughs> so, let me check where I was. Did I even do that? Like, yeah, well, you could see I wasn't that, I haven't done that much. You can see where my little <laughs> progress keeper is. But hey, I got a few rows in. So I am just, literally, I just made this up with double crochet. Um, I double crochet a certain number of rows and then I do a couple rows of um, single crochet with the cream just to break it up. But it's a great mindless little project that I enjoy when I'm in the mood for crochet. Okay, let's see here. Um, I showed you that. I showed you that, I showed you that. So uh, I guess if you want to call these works in progress, but I'm pretty sure they're not going to become anything. Um, but I've been taking a Domestica course with Charlotte Stone of Stone Knits. She's the one that wrote that adorable color work sock book called Charming, is it just Charming Color Work Socks, I think. She's lovely, and she uh, just put out a new course on Domestic, a video course teaching color work socks. Um, and if you've been watching this podcast for any length of time, you'll know that I struggle hard with, with color work socks. So I've taken the course. It also teach, is teaching me how to uh, create my own color work charts using Stitch Fiddle, which is amazing. And I love it, and it's easy. So uh, I played around and I found a little flower pattern online and I threw it into a chart and did the best I could. But I'll show you, this is funny. I should have brought my chicken sock from a year ago and shown you that first because that is super big. But this also is super big and I've already taken out the needles because it's not going to happen. But don't laugh. <laughs> I know. I know. It's giant. I think it's twice. Well, maybe not twice, but yeah, that is a big sock. It, it's, it would fit. Yeah, no, this wouldn't fit a human. Um, it's just some, some little yarns that I threw together. Again, I was just practicing and it didn't, didn't pan out. So then I created another chart thinking, okay, I'm going to try this again. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up that easy. Only this time, for some reason, I made it too complicated, way too complicated with colors. So I think I have four colors in, in some rows, and that's just crazy. But I'll show you anyway. 
First I'll show you what it should look like, and then I'll show you... Oh, I don't have a picture of what it should look like, actually. Darn. Oh, it, you know why it's on the computer. Well, it looks like a large flower uh, in a garden, and then next to it is a smaller flower, larger flower, smaller flower, and then there's like a fence. So it has, uh, these are the colors that it has, cream, whoops, the pink, the green, and the brown. And I am doing, I think it's, I think the size is correct this time, however, I'm just doing it way too tight, and I'm getting, it's just a crazy rippling, a crazy ripple sock. <laughs> so yeah, this one is not going to become a sock either. You can just see the beginning of some of the flowers coming. Of course, it would be this way when you wear the sock, the flowers would come down. And I want to say the design is about this far, and then I would... But I can already tell this isn't going to work out, so I will try again. I'm not giving up. The course is wonderful. It's not It's not Charlotte. It's me. It's my tension. I, I get very, I guess, tense. Like, I can't say that's what happened for this sock, though. This sock, um, I did it so loose, right? But this other one is just so, so tight. I guess I was compensating. So if I can just get somewhere in the middle... I'll be okay. I'm not giving up. I may simplify that colorwork pattern and try again. But oh boy. So anyway, those are some works in progress, I guess. Let's move on to dyeing. So for March's Patreon yarn, I decided to dye with avocado. Um, I did I dye, I did try dyeing with avocado once in the past, and I ended up with this pale tan. Not good. And I've been nervous to try it ever since, but I was determined, because pink is such a great color, that I was going to get some avocado pink. So I went to Walmart and bought some bagged avocados. They have three organic Haas, I think they're called, um, avocados for two fifty. dollars So the price is reasonable. So I got six bags, 18 avocados for $20. And I, you know, did my thing. I cleaned out all the pulp, put that in the freezer for later, guacamole, um, scrubbed out the skins, and scrubbed off the pits. And I put into one batch nine avocado pits and skins. Um, once I heated that up, I think I did an hour and a half at 180 degrees, just to simmer, never a boil, or it'll turn brown. Then I added some baking soda, and it shifted it really, really pink. So I was happy with the color. Threw in the yarn. And, well, here's one of the batches that I got. Here's a batch gorgeous pink. I love this this shade. Um, this is the lighter of the batches and this also <clears throat> is one of the lighter so not the first batch. The first batch is all packaged up and ready to be sent up to patrons so that's why I can't show you but it's a darker pink, more saturated. So um, yeah, these are not, they are light pink I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. I will have a cardigan or a pullover in this yarn because I saved some. I set some aside for me. But uh, yeah, I was so happy. So happy. So I highly recommend dyeing with avocado. I put all of the instructions on Patreon. If you're interested, you can go check out that. Um, yeah, so I wanted to just, oh, I wanted to show you a little chatter. Let's do a little chatter. Um, I went to, so the New England Knitters Group, which I belong to, that's the Kenny Bunk retreat that I go to in the fall. They put on a, um, a knit event in Kingston, New Hampshire, at their library. And it was so fun. There was food and desserts and 
a stash table. If you bring something, you could take something kind of thing. There were lots of women knitting. We had a little fashion show, show and tell. And it was just great. It was so fun. We stayed all day. And um, anyway, a friend who uh, had won a giveaway was came, you know, came there. She drove all the way from Buffalo, New York, and she gave me this adorable gnome as a little thank you gift, which she didn't have to do, but oh, I love this one. <laughs> it is so soft. I wish you could feel it. And then she gave me a lovely card. So thank you again, Beverly. I adore my little gnome and I keep it in a very safe place. So much appreciated. That was a really good time. All right, I wanna go get something else that I wanna show you I was working on. Hold on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, um, while I was, I had an injury, I, had, I developed, so from a, a cyst that I had on my thumb, which is related to osteoarthritis, and the root of it goes down to the joint, I, it ended up rupturing and I developed a major infection in the um, joint of my thumb. That's long story short. So I ended up going to urgent care and it hurt horribly, horribly. But I was able to get antibiotics and after about maybe 10 days, I started to feel better, but I still can't bend it, you know, still won't bend and it still hurts a lot if I use it. So if I don't use it, I'm fine. But my reason for telling you that story is that while I was recovering, I couldn't knit at all. It was very painful. I couldn't do anything in, you know, couldn't do a lot of things. So what I ended up doing instead was going through all of my yarn stash, um, putting it into groups and then bagging it. So for example, here's three skeins. And then I cataloged every single skein of yarn that I have. And then I found, I put all the information on index cards and then put them in order of the weight of the yarn and stuck them in these little dollar store photo albums. So that now I have, for example, all of my uh, lace yarn and I even have a little I received a little mini phone printer for Valentine's Day, so I was able to print out some of the colors, too, of the yarn. And like I said, I have it all in order. Here's the next batch would be fingering, and then it goes all the way up to bulky. Um, and what I put on each... Um, card is the name of the company, the name of the wool, what it's made of, how many yards, how many grams, obviously, uh, the weight and the color. And then what I do is I'll put in a pencil up here in the corner, I'll put how many skeins I have of that and how many yards that equals. And the reason I do it in pencil is because I've also been going to Ravelry D Stash to see if I have like if I have two or three skeins of something and I want to turn that into a sweater's quantity, I'll go and look for one or two more. So I feel like this number will be changing and that's why I didn't put it in a pen. But yeah, I think this is really going to help. This can I can throw this in my purse for when I go yarn shopping and I think it's going to really help me to to knit down my stash because that is the goal. So I did want to talk to you about that. And oh, the last thing is that my friend Marie and I, Marie of Old Time Knits, um, are hosting next year, 2025's retreat. So 2024's was so much fun that we decided we have to do it again. We found an amazing venue. It is a um, rustic log, log, log cabin lodge. Um, somewhat close to Harrisville Designs. So we are going to be um, hosting that from January 26th through January 29th. We have just a few spaces left. 
registration has already started. Um, if you are interested, just go to my Ravelry group and I'll leave all the information in the notes below, as well as all of the information on the yarn and the patterns and the makers that I've talked about today. All of the links will be below. I hope you have enjoyed this podcast episode. I have had so much fun talking to you about my makes and I'll see you again soon. Bye now. Be well. Thank you.